Hey, what is up guys? It's Brennan here and today we're going to be taking a look at how to use FreshBooks for beginners. So in this tutorial, you're going to learn exactly how to use FreshBooks as a brand new beginner, as a small business owner. Now, of course, first and foremost, I am not personally a CPA. In this video, we're going to be going through exactly how to use FreshBooks as a real true business owner and how to do simple bookkeeping and accounting for you in your small business in very easy to understand terms. Again, coming from a small business owner myself and teaching you exactly how to go about doing things in, again, FreshBooks software. Now, if you are just a, a brand new beginner to FreshBooks, maybe you haven't decided if you do want to go with them or not, or maybe you haven't signed up with them. If you do want to follow along, you can go ahead and check out that first link down below in the video description. That's brennanvaleski.com forward slash FreshBooks. It will take you right over to this page here where you can start with a FreshBooks for free. They do have a free trial as well. Again, as of the time of making today's video, again, some of the links in the video description, of course, are affiliate links, which is a great way to help out and support the channel. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial of FreshBooks. So once you have gone through entering your email and some of your own personal profile information, you will then be prompted here with the tell us about your business so we can tailor your experience. So walking you through step by step in this tutorial. So company's name, we're just going to go ahead and put in some, uh, uh, Joe's painting or something like that. Uh, you know, enter your company name, whatever that may be. Uh, what does your business do? You're going to want to make sure that you, of course, select the proper industry here in this part uh, of selecting the company that you're in. Of course, they do have a wide variety of different industries. Um, if they don't have something exactly tailored to the industry you're in, that's completely fine. It's not the end of the world. Um, we're just going to go with um, hmm, creative professionals. Sure. Uh, you know, it, depending on, or maybe construction home services, I guess that may be fit painting a little bit better. Uh, how would you describe your business? Uh, so this is where you would put it's launching soon, part-time or, you know, new business or full-time focus. Uh, again, the software is built to sort of build around based on what stage you're in. Uh, so we're going to say, eh, let's just say it's part-time up to 30,000. You can select the revenue there, estimated revenue. How long does it take to complete your services? Um, you know, more, more than a month, less than a week. Uh, let's just say less than a week. How do you bill your customers? So this comes into the play if you are going to be using the invoicing section of their accounting software. Again, FreshBooks is both an accounting software and in invoicing software as well. A lot of different accounting softwares these days uh, do tend to also offer invoicing services, so you can actually bill your customers uh, directly as well through the software. I figured I would mention that since we are in this part uh, of that here. So we're gonna say, um, I don't use anything right now, um, or <laughs> pen and paper, uh, spreadsheets, sure. Uh, how customized is your offering? Um, more or less the same. We're just going to go with that. We're going to go ahead and save and finish. And now this is going to bring us into the dashboard. Now, again, like I said, they do currently have a 30 day free trial. Uh, so if you are interested in that, again, first link down below in the video description. Uh, beyond that, of course, so as you can see here, welcome to FreshBooks. We're going to do a quick tour to get familiar with the platform. Uh, so here you'll see the navigation, of course, as you can see on screen here, uh, you find all the tools you need for your business in this menu. You have your settings section. This is where you would edit uh, business settings like your logos, templates, online payments, and more. Uh, as you can see here, this is also where you would add your bank connections. We're not going to be going through specific bank connections in this video here today uh, because, of course, that is private information there, but you're going to go ahead and link your bank information there uh, so you can automatically uh, log those transactions in your account, which is going to help you overall a lot in your accounting and bookkeeping uh, system is automatically linking those bank transactions. It's one of the main time savers, honestly, that comes with any of these types of softwares, whether it be FreshBooks or a lot of the other softwares that are out there. Uh, you can also add, of course, logos, templates. That comes more into play when you're talking about your invoicing uh, and making sure that your invoices look professional. Uh, you have your, of course, notifications there and so on and so forth, accounting, billing. Okay, so the first thing I would recommend going through here and adding, of course, if you do want to, is adding in those like logos and custom uh, information in your settings section. You know, some of the branding appearance, this is sort of like 
the overall look and feel. This is just something that you're going to want to do if you are um, utilizing the invoicing part of the FreshBooks software. So I do want to mention that here just because you're going to want to probably do that first just so that you know you already have that in there. So before you send that information out to any clients, it already has your logo, your colors. Uh, so this is where you can customize it. So you can kind of go like green, blue, red. Uh, I would just match your business or brand colors. You can also select uh, sort of a custom pinwheel. And as you can see here, it's automatically then adjusting the colors uh, on your invoice. You can change it to classic mode or modern. Uh, it really just depends on the kind of look and feel that you want for your invoices. I don't currently have a logo here for Joe's painting, but you can get the picture as far as what uh, the logo would just go over here in the top left-hand corner. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple, nice, sleek, easy um, look and feel to the invoicing. So we're going to go back to the dashboard. Uh, we're just going to click OK. And so as you can see here, you have a few different options. You have items and services that you can go ahead and add. This is really, honestly, when it comes to doing your invoicing, if you're going to be tracking inventory as well, I get that inventory tracking is maybe a little bit more advanced than not necessarily something that everyone's going to be doing. Um, even the same thing with selling services and doing invoicing through the software. Although if you are doing invoicing anywhere else, I would recommend doing it through your accounting software because it can just make your life a lot easier easier. Uh, that's what I personally do now. It just, it's a lot simpler to have it all in one software in my opinion. So to get all of this information here, such as like your revenue streams, your total profit and getting these graphs populated, you're going to need to add information in here, uh, into your overall, um, log right into your accounting to get the reports actually showing. So you have revenue uh, and expenses. You can see your outstanding invoices, which that's one of the nice things here that I do really like about FreshBooks is just how simple it is on this nice dashboard here. I think it's really nice. So we're going to go ahead and start populating this with some extra information here uh, to go ahead and start getting in some revenue and expenses. Now, to, to go ahead and do that, all you have to do is come over here to the left hand side. Now we do also have some other options here, such as like clients, um, you can add new clients, uh, you know, you can add overdue bills, current bills, you can go down to the accounting section. This is sort of where you're going to see your overall um, business in terms of beyond just like the invoicing. This is where you're going to see your profit and loss statements. You're going to see your chart of accounts, um, you know, all of that there. Now, if you're going to be doing single entry versus double entry accounting, this is sort of the difference there. Single entry is you're only going to be having that one entry of the profit and then the one entry of the exp or the income and expense, right? Double entry, you would actually have a balance sheet where you're going to be zeroing out things. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get into that here. So we're going to go ahead and click continue. Uh, this is where you're going to see all of your accounting. Uh, you can also invite accountants to do um, more advanced accounting within like journal entries and things like that as well, which is nice if you um, maybe already have somebody to do that part of your business. Uh, as well, just to bear that in mind. Uh, but this is where you would see all of that information here and get an overall snapshot uh, of your financial positions, of course, seeing your profit and loss statements and all of that as well. Now, again, as you can see here, we don't currently have any of that information added just yet, uh, but that's where the reporting will then populate. You can even favorite some of them. So you can see like invoicing, uh, you can favorite the ones that are most important to you in your business because some people, you know, I get that this software does have a lot of different features and you might not necessarily be needing to use every single um, piece of information that FreshBooks has to offer, uh, you know, depending on your business needs exactly, right? So if you're going to be doing time tracking uh, or payroll or something like that, uh, these are all pieces depending on, again, the number of employees you have in your business, if it's just you or if you have other people, um, that's sort of where you can kind of customize what reports you may care about or not care about as well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at payments. So invoice payments. So you can go ahead and add in uh, that income. Now, if you are going to be adding income like from bank accounts, that's where you're going to be doing your overall bank connection. So this is where you would then see your income and expenses as they come in 
from your business bank account, right? So you either have a business bank account or you just use a separate bank account. Uh, it might not necessarily be a business, uh, you know, quote unquote business bank account, especially if you're just a sole proprietor, might even just be a personal bank account that you would then link here. Uh, and once you link that, then all those transactions will come in automatically into the software. You can go ahead and log them automatically and be like, okay, Boom, this is for this category, that category. Uh, but to give you sort of an example, just through what an invoice would look like so you can see uh, the money coming in, we're gonna go ahead and create a, um, a payment actually. We're gonna go ahead and mark that as we made money. So we're gonna go ahead and mark, I don't know, $2,000, right? Let's just say we made $2,000. Uh, we're gonna say we made it in cash, hard, cold money, cash. Uh, you know, you can, uh, if you, again, if you do have your bank transactions automatically, those will automatically populate in here. This is just to show you for the sake of this tutorial, entering it in manually so you can get the overall picture of what, how it all categorizes it in. Uh, so we're going to say, well, there's not an invoice there. So payment date, we're going to go with today and boom, cash. We're just going to say we got to, okay, we guess we need an invoice, uh, type to add an invoice, uh, invoice a maybe you can add just a one uh, so i guess you do have to attach to an invoice okay so we're gonna have to go ahead and do it through an invoice then go ahead and add the invoice uh da, da, da. okay so when you're going in and adding invoices, this is where you're going to add in the information. Again, if you did link your bank account, that already would be populated there. The payment would be logged um, automatically. So there's no need uh, to have an invoice, of course, but in this case, because we're adding it manually, we're just gonna go ahead and add in the invoice. We're gonna go ahead and type in the total of $2,000 um, and select a client. I wonder if we can just save it okay you're making me create a client okay uh <laughs> okay we're gonna just go with uh joe uh gato and create the client okay cool so there you don't have to enter everything for every single client if you don't want to so we're gonna go ahead and click save okay cool 2000 all right, so now we should be able to then add that to the payment. Again, you won't be going through this if you're just linking your bank account directly. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily have that situation, right? Boom, okay, there we go. 2000, payment type, cash, came in the business, cool. So now it is marked as paid. So then that invoice payment will have come in. You also do have other income as well. So you can also add other income. Okay, so that's where you would then add in like other miscellaneous income. Okay, so you basically, let's just say the source was, I don't know, farmer's market. <laughs> you sold some painting services at a farmer's market. So it basically breaks it down really between the other income and the invoice payments. Um, you also have check checkout link payments, so you can send people checkout links as well directly uh, if you want. So you can sort of see invoice income separate in your PNL. So we're gonna say we made, I don't know, $1,000 from a farmer's market painting the wall, I guess, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, so you can put mark out different income categories as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can select the payment method. So uh, that's two check. We're just gonna say cash. Um, we're gonna assign that to that client as well. You can also add in tax, okay, so I guess we're gonna say in-person sales, there we go. So that will help you when you're going in and actually marking these. Uh, this is where you're going to go in and add these income entries. And then in your, the more data you have in there, basically it's forcing you to, pro to provide the extra information so that then when you go to your business reports, you're actually going to then see that uh, in there as well. So we're gonna go into the reports, uh, revenue by client, things like that. So Joe got to just, 2000 uh, right there. So we have that split out there. If you do have other clients, you'll see them come in there as well. Now, in terms of expenses, right? So you have your overall income. Let's go ahead and create an expense. 
Uh, so this is a bit more like straightforward, of course, in terms of adding the category. Okay, so this is really what it comes down to when it comes to tax time and what's important. So to help explain this here, these are your overall business expenses. This is where you're going to be getting your tax deductions on your, whether it be your Schedule C or whatever uh, tax form that you file, depending on the type of business that you run, whether it be an LLC, a sole proprietorship, or an S Corp, you know, whatever it may be. Be whatever your actual legal structure is. Uh, if you are running again just a sole proprietor, you're still going to be claiming those business expenses. Again, these need to be expenses within your business, of course, as it makes sense. Now, there's a lot of different types of expenses that you might have within your business, which, as you can see here, are labeled out and split out depending on the type of expense. This is super important to make sure that you're marking your expenses as they come into your business, especially if you have your bank accounts linked. That can obviously make your life a lot easier. Um, and then you need to go in and mark these expenses and categorize them accordingly as well. So the important part here is that each of these different categories come with a different set of IRS rules. And again, the IRS recommendations and those rules tend to change year to year as well. Um, so as you go in and mark them, you know, you might not get a 100% deduction on every single category. For example, and I say this here and specifically is that the IRS currently with restaurants and dining, because they see that, Hey, people have to eat anyway. Right now it's only a 50% deduction off of your tax bill on the qualified meals expenses within restaurants and dining because they're like, Hey, people still need to eat anyway and they no longer even count entertainment uh, as an actual deductible expense. They used to, and people, I don't know, maybe they were like, ah, too many people are taking advantage of just using entertainment for business. So um, they canceled that out. Maybe it'll come back in the future, who knows? But that's why it's important to mark each of these accordingly, because when you go to do your taxes and file your taxes, your expenses per category do matter because the deductions are different depending on what the IRS is doing for a given year. Again, it doesn't really necessarily matter for you to know what the IRS is doing in the current year uh, as you're logging these. This can also just help you so you know, hey, what categories am I actually spending on within my business and where can I maybe save some money here? Or, well, I'm spending a lot of money on bank fees or uh, business insurance or or something like that or legal fees or whatnot. Like you can then get more visibility as well on where your expenses are actually going within your business besides just the tax uh, savings side of things. Uh, but again, obviously the tax savings is a huge incentive uh, to make sure that you're, you're going in and logging these properly so that when it comes tax time, it's super easy for you to just boop, pop into a fresh books or your accounting software, and then just easily be able to get your overall expense report uh, for the year. So we're going to go ahead and log, I don't know, advertising expense. I guess that's pretty easy. So we're going to add a merchant here. We're going to say it's uh, <laughs> LOL, uh, LOL advertising. You don't have to add a description, the total. Uh, let's say we spent $200 on this uh, advertising or something like that, right? And you can make this recurring or add it to a cl specific client uh, or project as well, which can help in terms of just overall tracking. You can also drag and add your receipt images here if you would like to or want to do that as well. Um, you can also add taxes too or a description. That's all optional. Uh, you can change the date of that expense as well. We're just going to keep it as the same day just to keep things simple. Uh, you can set the currency. And again, you can also make it uh, recurring as well. So if you do want to, you know, automatically log regular expenses, again, this makes more sense if you're doing it sort of the more manual route, which is what I'm showing you here in this tutorial. If you're going to be using your bank transactions, you don't really, that would just create a headache if you made something recurring that's already going to be coming into your bank recurring. So just make sure that you're consistent uh, with the way that you're logging your income and your expenses when it comes to your accounting and bookkeeping system. Uh, that depends on you and the way that you're going to be doing it in your business. So we're gonna log that $200. We're gonna go ahead and save that expense here. Um, and now we have this expense. So as you can see here, $200, Joe Schmo. Uh, advertising <laughs> to LOL advertising. Uh, so you can, I really do like that the overall visual appeal is nice, honestly, within FreshBooks. Uh, so now we can see that we have that advertising expense. We're going to go ahead and add another expense in here too, uh, just to sort of, you know, fill out the expenses a little bit more. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add, let's just say it was to, 
um, Bill's Pizza or something. Uh, you know, we spent a lot of money on on pizza uh, this month or something like that. We're going to go ahead and create pizza and we're going to go ahead and mark the category. So we're going to say that is meals and well, we're going to say restaurants, dining. We're going to mark that we spent, I don't know, 50 bucks on pizza, right? I don't know. Uh, we're going to go ahead and then save that here. Restaurants and dining. So as you can see you here, they'll just come in here. Now, again, if you're can't, connecting your bank account, those will automatically be imported. Uh, you'll just have to go in and categorize them. I imagine they might sometimes be automatically categorized, but I would definitely make sure that the categorization is correct. That's something across all financial apps that when categorizing is automatic, it can have hiccups. So make sure that you're manually going through here and verifying the categories uh, if you are doing things automatically and not doing it manually, such as this method here, as I'm showing you in this tutorial. So we're gonna go ahead and log uh, I don't know another $300 in like other office expenses or something like that, right? We're just gonna go ahead and this is a pretty manual process uh, You know, I imagine you're not necessarily going to be doing it this way um, But this can just make it a little bit easier. So we're gonna go like office depot I don't know. Maybe we spent $300 there. We're just gonna go ahead and save that so we've got a few different expenses, right? So once your expenses are then added, uh, then those are all added in here. So when you go over to your accounting, you see your journal entries, your balance sheet, profit and loss. We're gonna go to profit and loss. So as you can see here, we have the invoice, we have the other income, and this is essentially what you're going to be doing, is just going in, entering in your sales, uh, you know, as you can see here, this is already labeled out even automatically just for the current year of, you know, January to December. Uh, and you can see in March, we have our invoice income of $2,000. We have our other income of $1,000. We have our gross profit of $300,000, or $3,000. Gross margins of 100% because there is no cost of goods sold. Um, that's, you know, if you're doing e-commerce, things like that, that's where your cost of goods sold would be. Then we have minus the expenses, which is $200 to advertising, uh, $50 to meals and entertainment, restaurants and dining and $300 to office expenses and postage. So your total expenses for this month is $550 and your net profit is $2,450. This personally is the, uh, what I would say is sort of your, your bread and butter here is your profit and loss statement. You mark your income and you minus the expenses and you get your profit and loss. This is the simplest way uh, to do overall bookkeeping and accounting for small business. You enter in, you do it the single entry way, right? You have your income, you got your expenses, and you get your net profit. That's all that you really need to do if you're just looking at doing simple, easy, small business, basic accounting, right? Just single entry accounting. This is what I personally like to do and would recommend to all, most people, honestly, watching this video. Uh, if you want to do the whole double entry balance sheet thing, that really makes a lot more sense, honestly, when it comes to much larger businesses. And at that point, you would probably be better off hiring a CPA or an accountant to really get everything reined in or someone with a bit more experience. But honestly, doing it this way, as you can see, it's very, very simple and easy to do. You go in, you add your income, you take your expenses, you add your expenses, and this is all that you really need when it comes to doing simple, basic taxes at the end of the day, marking you know your income and your expenses. This is what tax software asks for, is for this information. And let alone just even tax uh, si days aside, right? Uh, this is just super important information when it comes to keeping track of your business, how you're doing, what you're, you're actually, where is money coming from, where is it coming in, and how much are you actually making, and how much is it actually going out. Uh, ultimately, this is the statement that all business owners really need to be familiar with uh, to get a good grip of where their business is at and what their money is, how much money is actually coming in, how much money is actually going out, where they're spending it on uh, at the end of the day. And you can drill down into these categories and you know look at the actual expenses as well. Uh, but this is just a really good, easy way to get organized with your business, again, through FreshBooks. There's a lot of other features in here that you can dig into, um, which, I'm not gonna be going too much into all those other features here in today's video. Again, this is just a beginner tutorial showing you how to get, again, what most people really need out of the software is their profit and loss statement, marking your income, marking your expenses. Uh, and this is really 
what most people need. Um, so that's how you do it. That's how you do it in FreshBooks. Again, you can also do like time tracking, project tracking. That's not necessarily what everybody needs in their business. Again, go ahead if you do want to try out FreshBooks for yourself. Uh, if you found this video helpful, you know, go ahead and check out that first link down below in the description. That's brennavaleski.com forward slash FreshBooks. It will take you over to FreshBooks where you can get signed up. Again, there's a lot of other features as well within FreshBooks that you can dig into, such as the time tracking, uh, projects and reporting. Like, it really is dependent on your business and what your actual needs are. Uh, but again, if you just want to set it up very simply in terms of your overall business accounting, um, that, that, that's how you do it within your reports, your profit and loss report. You could even, honestly, you could even drag it into, you can mark it as a favorite and it'll be marked right here as one of your favorite reports. Uh, and that's all you have to do. Uh, honestly, I mean, it's very simple, very easy to understand uh, when you're going through and marking those transactions. Uh, so guys, hopefully, again, you found this beginner tutorial of FreshBooks helpful. Again, there's a lot of other extra nitty gritty details you can get into in terms of customization and, and there is a lot more you can do within FreshBooks. Again, that's not the goal of this video. Just want to give you a very simple overview of FreshBooks and how to use it. And again, you can also see, boom, you got your revenue, your income and expenses for that month as it's logged and you can see your total profit here, your revenue streams, you got your invoices, your in-person sales, you got your spending, you know, Boom, that's it. I mean, really, that's what a lot of people just need is just the getting off the ground, getting started with the basics. That was the goal of this video here today with FreshBooks. So again, guys, if you found this video helpful, then be sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button as well, and notification bell as well so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Again, if you do want to check out FreshBooks or get signed up with them, you can go and check out that first link down below in the description. Again, that's brennanvaleski.com forward slash FreshBooks. I'll take you right over to this page here where you can get started with FreshBooks today for free. Again, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.